Let's face it, not everyone learns in front of an instructor. Some people learn very well on their own. Others may learn by discussing the PEMBOK guide with a trainer or coach. Others may learn by watching videos. If that sounds like you in any one of those instances, you need to go on down to praiseon.com. P R A I Z I O N.com. We provide solutions for all modes of learning. Go on down and see what we have in store. Let's get back into the show. Hello, and thank you for joining me on the PMP Exam Radio Show today. Today, we have an episode that needs your full attention. So, if you are driving, this will probably need you to park for 10 15 minutes and take this quiz or take it when you are stationary. It will require you to probably see the question. So, if you are on YouTube, I want to direct you to the link down below. Click on that and you can view the questions on YouTube. Sometimes seeing things visually is better than hearing them. All right, so let's jump into today's show. Welcome to part two of the Project Management Masterclass Preview. Today, we're going to be looking at questions. We start off with the people piece of the exam. First question, you are working on a project as a team facilitator. You have identified that there is conflict among four team members who have formed factions. What is the best course of action for this situation? A, resolve the conflict issue for the team and get management involvement. B, evaluate, recommend, and reconcile the appropriate resolution solution. C, avoid getting involved in the conflict. These matters are expected on teams. D, find out which party is wrong by having separate discussions with the team. I'll give you five seconds to conclude your answer. And if you need more time, feel free to hit the pause button. Five, four, three, two, one. The answer to this is B. This is the best option based on the PMP exam content outline. All the other options are either reactive or incorrect. A lot of the questions on the exam are as straightforward as knowing what is the right thing to do versus what are the seemingly nice sounding things that are incorrect. Conflict is not about finding out who is right or wrong. It's about bringing both parties to the table as much as possible to collaborate you could be a facilitator of that collaboration. And that is what B suggests. D is wrong. C, don't avoid getting involved in the conflict. It says you're working as a project team facilitator. This is part of your job. And A, you don't resolve conflict issues for the team and get management involvement under most circumstances. Don't resolve conflict for two parties. Next question. A new team member just joined the project with very little experience. However, she is very confident in herself and her abilities to learn. She's very eager to take on work. Which leadership approach should you use with her? A, delegating. B, coach. C, directing. D, collaborative. Five, four, three, two, 
one. If you need more time, hit the pause button. The answer to this question is based on the Hersey Blanchard situational leadership model. And in that model, we have four quadrants, bottom right, direct, top right, coach, top left, participative or supportive type of leadership, and the bottom left, delegating. In this case, we have an individual who is already highly motivated, eager to take on work and confident. Therefore, this individual needs a lot of direction because they have no experience, but they don't need a whole lot of support. For that reason, we would choose the directing style. The answer to this is C. Let's go to our next question. As a servant leader on an agile project, one of your key responsibilities is to A, remove impediments, B, delegate work to team members, C, plan out the schedule and cost, D, plan out the scope, schedule, cost, and quality. Hit the pause button if you need more time. Three, two, one. Taking a look at the question setup as a servant leader, one of the key things you do is remove roadblocks. So the correct answer for this is remove impediments. This is the best option based on the Agile Practice Guide and general agile industry awareness. Next question. On your five month government project with 20 powerful stakeholders, you also have a stakeholder with a low level of power and interest on the project. What should you do next with this stakeholder? A, keep informed. B, monitor, C, keep motivated, D, manage close. Hit the pause button if you need more time. Countdown, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's take a look at the power interest grid, also known as the influence impact grid. You might recall from our studying together, from other videos I have on YouTube, you can think about power on the y-axis and interest on the x-axis. You could break this down into four quadrants. Stakeholders with a low level of power and a low level of interest, you need to monitor low level of power, low level of interest. Monitor them because they could change as the project evolves. Stakeholders with a high level of power and a low level of interest, you want to keep satisfied stakeholders with a high level of power and a high level of interest. You want to manage close and stakeholders with a high level of interest and a low level of power, you want to keep informed. Therefore, the answer to this, a low level of power and interest is monitor B. Next question. Understanding what ready means so the team can take in work, what done means so the team 
can judge completeness consistently should be in a document known as what? Is it A, the project charter? Is it B, the project scope statement? Is it C, social contract? Is it D, scope management plan? Five, four, three, two, and one. The answer to this question can be found in the Agile Practice Guide on page 50. The best option is not the project charter. At this stage, the team hasn't even started conversing, and it's the team that defines some of these terms. So it can't be the project charter. Project scope statement is from the traditional world, can't be that. Ready and done are agile terms. And D, scope management plan, it can't be that. So on your exam, use the process of elimination to cross out what it couldn't be. The only one it could be is social contract, C. Once again, familiarize yourself with the tools that are likely to be available on your exam based on feedback from other students. Also go on down to the Pearson site and make sure you are familiar with the layout of the exam and the interface. It will help you. If you're getting ready for the exam and you are stumped and stuck and you need additional help, I would encourage you to go on down to our website. It's praiseon.com. On that website, you can sign up for the Project Management Masterclass. You can sign up for on-demand training that you do self-study. You can sign up for the Agile Practice Guide Immersion Training, where we go through the Agile Practice Guide. If you're a PMP, you can look into the Project Leadership Institute. And if you click on that link for self-study, and you scroll down, you see different options, but one of the options is live coaching. So if you need a live coach, hit that. And before you know it, you'll be laughing all the way to the score bank. Thank you very much for joining me on this first episode of PMP Questions. That was again from the people domain. In our next episode, we'll take a look at the process domain.